Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this uh, uh, daily Hindu paper analysis video and uh, on this study IQ channel you see you will find the best information available regarding the current affairs and the PIB uh, videos uh, they are coming in the evening and the, both these uh, lessons totally exam oriented these are these days and please do not miss any of the lessons I have changed my methodology in these uh, videos these days and uh, I requested you for the feedback and let's start the lesson I would not uh, waste any minute here and these are the numbers there you can call and you can ask for these pen drive courses by study IQ and very important courses created by experts and uh, selected people and these are gonna save your lakhs of rupees okay so on these numbers you can call and you can visit the study IQ website and uh, stay at your home and best matter is available with a very few amount these are the numbers uh, these are the words uh, that i found today and try them into sentences a literary article is here it is regarding the democracy and the democratic process and the democratic project that we all need today so gs paper 2 1 and uh, a very important topic of essay this also is and uh, we will discuss that it's a political one no need to discuss this issue is a repeated one where we had discussed the uh, ethical aspect of the space race the arms race and the military infrastructure that all countries are developing and it has become a race and our particular capability that we have developed after shooting the uh, this uh, a satellite so we all know that because all these countries they are developing and they are not stopping themselves from these doing these kind of experiments so it is necessary for us also that we develop these capability but you see it is requesting to all the countries that uh, uh, it's not ethical and we should use outer space for the humanity's development not for its destruction and that thing is very simple to understand if we are starting this race that means uh, if we use it even once then there would be total destruction of the humanity because that destruction would not stop so we have become the enemy of ourselves only so that's the issue next uh, no surprises we are going to discuss this particular topic it is regarding the rbi's approach and uh, uh, the 25 basis point reduction in the repo rate so important for gs paper 3 and 2 both here uh, they are talking about the doles and jobs this is the election phase what kind of discussions should be there and uh, what kind of things are going to be beneficial if we compare the situation with the uh, these uh, beneficial uh, uh, giftings adults whatever they are giving in the name of income transfer and all basic income and all what uh, how these things are discussed and uh, here the issue of jobs are there and india is in a perilous state in the context of employment so how do we balance that how do we achieve both these things because both are both are necessary today so it is regarding that it's an interview here so we will not discuss that next we would start with the editorial no surprises you see many situations are going on like liquidity crisis is also going on for the last uh, seven to eight months after il and fs that uh, infrastructure lending and financial services this company as a giant as a, as a blue chip company that uh, was failed and a lot of subsidiaries they were not working nbfc's uh, were going through a lot of stress they had taken loans from these banks and they are not able to repay that and banks are dealing with the npa crisis and all but you see the issue is that the inflation is under control it is only uh, in the uh, perfect uh, framework it is at 2.6 percent now so the prices of the commodities they are not rising that means when inflation is low then we have some space that we can decrease the repo rate by some points so it is uh, done by the uh, by the rbi a lot of the reduction was actually needed and that was expected they expected that around 0.5 percent or the 50 basis point would be the reduction but now it's a conservative one 25 basis points they have reduced here but you see it's a kind of an indirect acceptance that economy is not gro uh, growing with a good pace and the progress is very very low so there is a trouble and you see the issue is also that if inflation is gonna rise then always what we have to do always we have to 
इंक्रीज द इंटरेस्ट रेट ऑल्सो बट हेयर इन अ यूनिक सिचुएशन वेयर इन्फ्लेशन इज अंडर कंट्रोल बट इकोनॉमी इज नॉट प्रोग्रेसिंग दैट मीन्स we have to reduce this interest rate this is the formula that we adopt and this is in the support of economic cycle because the inflation is less that is why the liquidity is also less in the market and because of that there is low growth because investment is low and production is low demand and supply is also low so that is why we need to boost that so we would lower this these interest rates so that more people are able to take loans and this economy is pushed so that is the thing but you see some uh, uh, speculations are there some uh, reservations are there that inflation will rise very soon because the monsoon is going to be impacted negatively and this is going to be the el nino year and in the el nino year there is weak monsoon that means the food inflation would be there and some crisis would also be uh, there and uh, after that one more issue is of the international prices of the crude oil that is also going to rise because the production of the crude oil is very less these days many of these plants they have been shut down and because of that the price would rise so both these factors are inflationary and inflation is going to rise very soon so at that particular time we cannot lower the repo rate here and ultimately we need to uh, stop this uh, uh, liquidity pressure uh, in those phases so this is how it's a complex task it's a balanced task and always they are trying to solve these dilemmas okay so it's not an easy thing now this fiscal year's first mpc uh, committee's meet was there and shashikant das decided that uh, the 25 basis point should be decreased and that that is how banks would also be pushed that they lower their interest rates but now it is up to the banks because you see this it is the problem according to the monetary policy of rbi rbi decides about the rate cuts but that is not propagated in the same form by these banks because they are dealing with their own crisis and their incomes are also under stress so they in the same sense do not lower the interest rates and they will keep earning these uh, particular amount because now the uh, repo rate is less and banks will keep giving loans on the same rate as they were giving that means this difference is increased now and this is the income of the banks so that is the problem but you see now the mcrr system is also there where marginal cost based lending rate system is going on and banks in every case they see that what is the operational cost what is the cost of the loan that we are giving so according to that they decide about the interest rate so this mcrr system since 2016 is also going on so we would see the impact of it and we would see that how uh, early the inflation is going to rise right now it is in the bracket of 2 to 6% and uh, around 4% and it is less than 4% so we have this particular space and you see one more important thing is going on where uh, rbi is uh, a 12 february circular is quashed by supreme court and that became as a problem towards the step in managing the npas situation but you see now rbi is reframing its guidelines so that this control is not lost by rbi and it would be able to manage the npa crisis although some negative impact would be there because this circular was very very important and rbi has uh, quashed this particular circular so this has uh, come as a problem in this uh, uh, stressful times for the banks but rbi is reframing its guidelines so that prudent decision is also pending and one more important thing that they have lowered the projection of the growth rate also CSO has given 7% now and RBI has given 7.2% now which was around 7.4% by both next making democracy meaningful this article says that we need to follow a democratic project here because india is a very very complex country and today the ambience is like that political parties they have become totally unethical they are only only focusing on their political survival they are saying anything they are dividing in any sense they are targeting a particular groups and anyhow they are targeting majority so that we, they can get the uh, votes by majority 
this is the only aim they do not care about the country's harmony they do not care about the country's diversity they are not caring about our democratic values that we decided when we got independence so this is the open scenario today and you see all flouting of norms model code of conduct is not being followed properly election commission is also inviting a lot of allegation that it is taking action against all other parties and all other moves recently the book on rafael was uh, uh, captured and they uh, put a break on that there it's launching uh, they uh, did not allow it but they have allowed a lot of other situations where some uh, minister is saying that uh, army is uh, prime minister's sena and these are very very objection object, uh, objectionable remarks and many army officers including one minister they are saying that this is not appropriate to say anywhere and this is very very objectionable you cannot call it and in some other state they are uh, inviting flat of election commission election commission is questioning them why these kind of moves why you are saying things like that the governor of rajasthan he made a statement that i am a party worker and he is sitting on the constitutional post of governor there so he has also invited some flag from the election commission of india but not any robust action we see against these harmful things and one more issue of uh, movie uh, the, as, as a bio, biopic during this election phase and one namo tv you see everyone is saying that this is a kind of a adver advertisement this is not a dth channel and what is the credibility of this particular channel and what is the ownership ownership is not clear till now many days it has been running on the free platform and people are watching it and the ownership is not yet confirmed so these kind of steps are saying that everything they are trying and there is no restraint on uh, their conduct you see these kind of things are unprecedented never we have seen in our country these kind of moves where movies tv channels all are supporting a particular party a particular uh, 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 group or a particular leader and it is a biased system because you see if they are promoting uh, one leader or one political party then they should also promote other people because their ultimate aim should be to promote the election process and a fair and free election but this is a biased system and you see the condition of media today that is the most object objectionable of all they are not giving information in its original form they are actually running agendas through these informations and you see this is not a political statement this is totally against the democratic values where we should have focused on the core issues but you see what is happening uh, today in rallies in all these uh, media debates they are uh, talking to normal public and mainly these are poor population the 70% population of india which is uh, not much educated they do not uh, have any knowledge regarding the uh, economic basics they do not have knowledge about the constitutional features they do not have knowledge about the uh, the political basis the basic feature of our constitution and to these people the leaders are talking about the international security issues the bilateral issues and uh, uh, the international scenario uh, where we are, we are performing uh, with some uh, features and all these kind of high level topics are being discussed with the poor population of india as they are understanding they are not understanding anything but they are not talking about their core issues they are not uh, talking not talking about the unemployment why this situation is there why the data crisis is there why they are not releasing important uh, reports that is not clear why they are giving uh, the coastal uh, zone regulation like uh, notifications and why the crisis is there in the manufacturing sector why banking is struggling so hard why agrarian crisis is not manageable what is the situation of their uh, uh, irrigation projects what about what is the plan about the monsoon situation alino is coming so no discussion on these basic topics they are discussing security issues and bharat mata bharat mata pakistan pakistan and uh, taking names of a particular religion again and again they are targeting those less educated people who do not know about these crucial issues and they cannot give their original opinions they are dependent on the media they are dependent on this information and when information is not coming in a right, right form then 
this is total destruction of the democratic values so this shows as a symptom that they are not uh, talking logically here they are targeting those uneducated poor population whom they will gain votes because unfortunately there is a similar value of votes whether at one side there are these poor people these are naive people who do not have much knowledge about these crucial aspects because they are poor and they cannot afford to get this this much knowledge and they are dependent on these uh, media houses and all and at one side there are scholars who are writing important uh, articles on economy on politics on social issues and they are researchers and great mind think tanks of india they both have the same value of their votes so that is why political classes all the parties they are targeting those poor population that is why they are bringing these uh, schemes like income transfers and they are promising anything to these population one is uh, giving them 15 lakh one is giving them 72000 and uh, both are saying that we are progressing but how they are progressing they are not uh, uh, they are not uh, clarifying these issues so the details are not being provided to the less educated naive population of india and these people are being targeted here if we uh, go through the important writings of uh, kem panikar's caste and democracy ambedkar's annihilation of caste ramana roya's marx gandhi and socialism jayaprakash narayan's a plea for reconstruction of indian polity and constitutional As assemblies debates which are most important we do not find any kind of similarity in their aspirations and today's political discourses so that is why they say that there is not confusion this is a deliberate attempt to destroy the democracy to keep people poor and to give rise to this inequality aspect because the people who are benefiting the people who are rising uh, uh, in a today's scenario these are rich pol uh, uh, political classes or rich corporate houses okay who are uh, uh, winning the projects of uh, a communication sector who are winning the projects of airline sector who are winning the projects of uh, uh, mobile industry and all these projects are going on and they are rising very very fast and the public sector units they are uh, getting shut down and uh, uh, the wealth is rising for the for the ministers for the uh, the party presidents and all and these things are happening with the full pace and this is not new but the intensity is rising very very fast and some unprecedented uh, unprecedented moves like the role of media and uh, these kind of things which we are seeing for the first time okay and with these methods with these popular and opinion changing methods uh, political classes know that movies they bring a lot of impact on the population of india and in the moral code of conduct there are a lot of restrictions so at this time they are trying these loopholes where they can change people's opinion during this election phase and you see by these uh, ways they are not discussing the core issues they are distracting uh, distracting them from these core issues and they are talking about the emotional issues because you see they know that less educated and poor population they are more moved by emotions because what education tells us education is there uh, for everybody so that we can improve uh, our mind and we are not taking emotional decisions we are taking decisions with the help of our brain so education's role is to improve our mind but they know that these people have less education so they will uh, use their emotions in their decision making they will not use their brains because they are uh, they are actually destroying their logical capability they are debilitating them by bringing emotional issues religion caste these kind of things they are making people blind out of these issues and all the political parties are doing that so that's the issue and that is why these uh, informations are appearing in the newspaper because these are questionable things and you see some important uh, points which they should discuss are these strengthening public health system uh, education in the mother tongue quality education in the mother tongue and uh, neighborhood schools public transport entrepreneurship and skill development universal social in insurance and uh, reaching out to those who suffer disadvantages that means these are the core issues and the budget should rise for the education budget f f should rise for the health sector and the basic health facilities not the hospitalization uh, schemes which they are bringing 
द एक्चुअल बजट फॉर द प्राइमरी सर्विसेस दैट शुड राइज द बजट शुड राइज फॉर द स्किलिंग एंड द बेसिक जॉब्स एटलीस्ट सो दैट द पुअर पॉपुलेशन कैन इंप्रूव दे शुड नॉट से दैट वी आर सेलिंग ऑटोमोबाइल यूनिट्स एंड दे आर प्रोवाइडिंग एम्प्लॉयमेंट दे हैव बीन ऑलवेज देयर ट्रक्स एंड ऑटोज दे हैव ऑलवेज बीन देयर एंड दे हैव ऑलवेज बीन प्रोवाइडिंग जॉब्स so it is not like that uh, these are new job avenues actual jobs everybody understands if somebody is uh, uh, claiming that uh, uh, becoming a chaukidar or becoming a pagoda seller is a, a meaningful job then it is wrong these are not meaningful jobs these jobs are done by those people who are totally stressed and they do not have any ab- ability to do something else or they are not finding any job so out of their poor conditions they are selling pagodas and they are becoming chaukidars out of their will nobody is ready to take these jobs these are minion jobs everyone knows that so we cannot uh, uh, we cannot uh, establish a parallel between the government's secure jobs or some private sectors nice paying jobs with the pakoda selling job so these kind of parallels are being established and you see whenever we talk about these issues they become political this is the unfortunate condition of today's india but you see what uh, what is a failed system here the democratic project that we should take that we should count everyone as equal we should not give importance to religion we should not give importance to caste because these are dividing factors here differences are highlighted so we should not highlight them we should highlight the unity of india we should highlight the diversity of india and unity and diversity of india and we should take this thing as a democratic project and the responsibility should be taken by the political class because they are wielding the ultimate authority and if they are involved in these kind of uh, uh, jugglers of data as if they are uh, involved in these kind of uh, smartness in these interpretation and uh, setting the agendas with media this nexus is going on then we cannot expect any kind of growth for this nation and this would be the most problematic thing okay so consistent and deliberate attempts if they would be negative in a sense and which are totally against our constitutional values and democratic values then we should not expect anything positive from this situation we have to change it and we have we uh, have to abdicate those venues which are supporting these negative moves which are continuing these negative moves so that is the thing and that is the crux of this particular article he is citing many examples uh, before independence uh, issues also and they all are talking about the same issues that a political community of free and equal citizens who wish to define their collective life in the indefinite future irrespective of and taking along the differences among them means a political community of free and equal citizens that we aspire for and who wish to define their collective life in the indefinite future means if they are talking about the religion and they are not talking about the employment that is that means it is indefinite future because they will keep talking about these issues they will keep talking about the temple issues masjid issues and they will not tell you about the right uh, uh, institutional datas and they will not uh, talk about the uh, proper budget uh, uh, allocations for health and education that means they are bringing you the indefinite future so these things they should stop and we should understand we should develop this logical ability and if these things are uh, certainly there then there is a disconnect between this imaginary and the turn elections have taken in the uh, today's uh, condition of india now we talk about the facts uh, here and as i told you yesterday i have changed this particular way i would uh, put up a question then we would move towards the uh, important information relating to that and that has appeared in the newspaper monetary policy committee is defined in the section of the uh, rbi act 1934 and constituted under the subsection of the same act that is perfectly correct the history of suggestions of setting up a mpc is not new and traces back to 2002 when y v reddy committee recommended for a mpc to decide policy actions that is again correct first time it was uh, proposed by the former uh, rbi governor yv reddy after that uh, raghuram rajan also said about that ujit patel committee also said about that and they established in 
and uh, that has become the most important uh, body under RBI which decides about inflation uh, targeting and other crucial aspects of, of uh, repo rate and all. So this is how they are managing the monetary aspect of the economy and it is by the central bank that is RBI. MPC will have six members that is okay but not all from RBI board. Three would be from RBI governor as a chairman deputy governor and one more member from the RBI board. So uh, three people from RBI and three people central government would appoint here. So this is wrong. These two are right. So one and two is the correct answer here. Now what is the context? RBI cuts benchmark interest rate again a lower GDP forecast to 7.2 percent. They have changed and as I told you we discussed in the article that 25 basis point uh, is the decrease in the repo rate and they are targeting it because inflation is under control it is only 2.6 percent so they have this space that they can lower the interest rates here so that economy is boosted investment may rise and liquidity may rise here okay and this is all a decision taken under the MPC's recent meet and it was the first meet of this fiscal year MPC will have six members as I told you a search come selection committee would be there in this search committee selection committee cabinet secretary that is uh, uh, an IS officer an RBI governor secretary of the department of economic affairs which comes under ministry of finance that secretary is again a civil servant and they uh, would nominate these three people who are not coming from the RBI so uh, three people who are from RBI and three people appointed by this selection committee okay total six members now RBI act prohibits appointing any member of parliament or MLA or any public servant or any person who is in conflict with RBI interest or any person above the age of 70 they cannot be appointed to MPC that's very very important in 2016 MPC came and the question came about that Further, central government also retains power to remove any of its nominated members from MPC. Anytime they can remove uh, people from this particular three uh, persons group, which are appointed by this particular committee. So this uh, reservation also is there with central government. Next question is regarding the MCLR system used by banks after 2016 is marginal cost based lending rate system. There used to be a base rate system. And when RBI was uh, deciding about this base rate and the banks would give loans more than this base rate if RBI decides that 7% would be that then banks cannot give loans less than 7% and it was the benchmark rate also before that now see in 2016 they uh, actually decided about a problem what was the problem when RBI was uh, trying to propagate this advantage to the consumers in this country that when, I, when it is gonna uh, decrease the repo rate then banks should also lower their interest rates so that this advantage is taken by consumers and less interest rate uh, they can avail on their loans but you see what banks used to do when RBI decides about this interest rates they had certain assets with them which is, is the money and uh, which they are going to give as loans but the cost for that money is higher because they arranged it in the past and at that time the rates were high and this money which is lying with the banks that cost is higher than the current interest rate and maybe they took it uh, as a, on a commitment of 8% and now, now RBI says that give this loan to uh, people for 7% that means it's a 1% loss for these banks so this was the problem of operational cost for the banks now banks are deciding about every case that they would see that what, what is the marginal cost and what is the operation, operational cost of a particular loan and for the bigger loans it's a important issue so now they are deciding about the marginal cost and the operating cost and they would give loans according to that this is the mclr system okay and from 2016 they have moved towards it and they gave this uh, option to the consumers also that whether they would move towards the mclr system or not now the context is the information is there in the today's newspaper that banks have cut mclr by 10 basis points but more needs to be done and it is in the same situation where i discussed about uh, the liquidity crunch and uh, the low growth in the economy and the projections have also come down to seven percent now 
ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन रेगेज रिगार्डिंग द ब्लू चिप कंपनी ब्लू चिप इज अशनली रिकॉग्नाइज एंड वेल एस्टेब्लिश एंड फाइनेंशियली साउंड कंपनी दैट इज करेक्ट ब्लू चिप जनरली सेल्स हाई क्वालिटी वाइडली एक्सेप्टेड प्रोडक्ट्स एंड सर्विसेज दैट इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट ब्लू चिप कंपनीज आर नोन टू वेदर विदर डाउन टर्न एंड ऑपरेट प्रोफिटेबिलिटी इन द फेस ऑफ एडवर्स इकोनॉमिक कंडीशन विच हेल्प टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू देयर लॉन्ग रिकॉर्ड ऑफ स्टेबल एंड रिलायबल ग्रोथ दैट इज अगेन करेक्ट सो ऑल आर राइट ऑप्शन यू सी द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ आई एल एफ एस infrastructure lending and financial services a huge company recently government announced last year that it is too big to fail company means it has connections with many many sectors and if it is going to fail then economy is going to be impacted uh, in a huge manner because the losses would cross 50 60000 or lakhs of crores of rupees so we cannot uh, manage we cannot afford to Uh, to fail it, so they are giving support to it. Now it used to be the blue chip company because, as I told you, many great infrastructure projects they were financed by ILFS and uh, NBFCs were also uh, working under it as subsidiary companies. And NBF NBFCs now fail facing a lot of uh, uh, stress because they are the biggest borrowers from the commercial banks, and they are not able to repay the banks. which they took from the commercial banks nbfcs are different uh, and commercial banks are different certain conditions are there with the nbfcs that uh, they cannot uh, uh, take uh, time deposits and all and they can only finance and all so these kind of things are there but financial services they are disturbed and they are stressed and npas are rising with the central banks so this kind of situation is there and that this has brought a condition of liquidity crunch in october last year and in november last year government and rbi they discussed about this matter and rbi went for open market operations twice and they actually bought these uh, uh, government securities what are the open market operations when liquidity is less in the market and at that time inflation would also be low so at that time they need to infuse some money in the market so at that time they would buy the government securities from the market so that they would buy the uh, securities and they would return the money for the consumers so this money would uh, come to the economy and the liquidity is going to rise if liquidity is very high in the market inflation is very high then rbi is going to sell these government securities so that it would suck this excess liquidity from the market and these people would have this uh, this uh, these uh, government securities and they would earn interest on that so this is the way of open market operations and this is how government through rbi manages the liquidity situation but apart from that recently rbi went for currency swaps also when uh, dollars uh, uh, were uh, uh, bought and uh, the money in rupees that was infused in the market so RBI went for credit swap also, currency swap also. So this is again a unique way of managing the liquidity situation. And this was the first time when RBI went for credit swap. Sorry, currency swap. Okay, so this was the situation, and it was related with the blue chip companies in the basis. So uh, this is all given here, and the explanation that I have given to you, this is all written here. Okay, the NBFC. Uh, uh, stress about the liquidity and how they are not able to raise more money because a lot of conditions are there and many npas are there with the banks and how this irf has failed and you see many projects are there chinani nasri tunnel why i am putting this question because this chinani nasri tunnel was sponsored by manufactured uh, by ilfs only okay there is a particular manufacturing uh, network of it and that uh, uh, that has uh, established this uh, chennai nasri tunnel it's the longest tunnel length of 92 9.28 km it is in the state of jammu and kashmir it is also called patni top tunnel and it has reduced the distance be between jammu and kashmir up to 30 km and it is having all the integrated tunnel control systems most advanced systems and now it is possible that in all weathers we can reach up to kashmir from jammu uh, from the jammu region because for 6 months uh, this way used to be closed because of the heavy snowfall but now because because of this tunnel this is totally possible and it was inaugurated by prime minister in april 
2017 that was one of the most important project by ILFS and in the state of Jammu and Kashmir so uh, this uh, option 1 and 2 is the correct because it says that NH1 it is not NH1 presently it is NH44 presently the, the numbers have been revised for national highways and it, these are according to the longitudes and latitudes now and NS44 is the longest one now it uh, runs from Kashmir to Kanyakumari in the south okay so this is the picture of this particular tunnel and ILFS was crucial here next question Mohammed Yamin is the king of Brunei no it is not correct Mohammed Yamin is related with Maldives and he was the last president and now many cases are there against him he was acting as a pro-China uh, leader and uh, now elections are there and king of Brunei he is in news uh, he has been there in power for the last five decades and he has the absolute monarch there not even constitutional monarch he is absolute monarch there he decides about everything and his name is Sultan Hasnal Bolkaya recently he gave a particular decision regarding the LGBT community and he banned gay sex there and he said any person who's, who would be found to be in, involved in gay sex he would be stoned to death stoned to death it's a very harsh Sharia law and it is very very unfortunate and it is inviting a lot of flag from the international community and all are criticizing this particular move and they are saying it is totally inhumane because even in India we have uh, decriminalized the section 377 of our, of our IPC which was about to homosexuality and the uh, LGBT community and uh, in many countries it has got the constitutional acceptance and here in this 21st century Sultan Hassan Bulkaya he said that he they would kill any person stoning him to death if they would be uh, involved in this homosexuality so uh, this is wrong and second is also wrong because Brunei is absolute monarchy it is not constitutional monarchy when there is a constitution maybe a written constitution if the power is given to monarch from this constitution then it is a constitutional monarchy if constitution is not there and absolutely in an arbitrary manner if monarch is working and all powers in his hand then he is the absolute monarch so this uh, 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 sultan hasanal bolkia is the absolute monarch in brunei and tell me the location of brunei on the map i would give you a hint it is north to the Malaysia's uh, particular part it is north to, to that and find out the location of Malaysia it is uh, north to Indonesia and it is in the eastern part of this world map this is the hint I'm giving you Bandar Seri Bhagwan is a very important port and the capital of it next Komodo dragon it is appearing in the news it's not a snake it is a species of lizard okay and it's a very important and unique lizard it is only found in the komodo island of uh, indonesia and uh, these islands are there where it is found in number but komodo island is the most important one and it is a very important tourist place and you see they are shutting this particular uh, uh, particular protected area down because uh, they are hearing about some uh, adverse conditions to this lizard so only two is the correct answer here because it is not a species of snake you see here indonesia is island closer to help wildlife okay it's under vulnerable category of iucn vulnerable category is after endangered category after endangered uh, there is critically endangered after that uh, extinct in wild and then extinct so it is in vulnerable status and you see it's a very unique species it the size is up to three meters you see the lizard the big lizard and the uniqueness is that on its tongue there are very uh, dangerous bacteria and how it kills the prey it would bite it okay after the bite all these bacteria would be transferred into the blood of that particular prey and it would run away from the spot after two three days that particular animal or any person that would die of the septic or the infection and this is how uh, it kills its prey and it's very very dangerous bacteria but these bacteria they do not affect this komodo dragon it's this lizard so this is very unique and you see it is the phylum of codata and class of reptilia 
an order of squamata under the squamata only all these snakes and all they come but it is not the species of snake it is lizard next question is regarding global alliance for improved nutrition gain it's an independent non-profit foundation based in geneva switzerland that is okay and it was developed by united nations in 2002 after a special session of the general assembly on children so both are correct statements third statement is not correct because vinita bali is the chair of the board she is not executive director executive director is a different person why this uh, organization is important i'm i'm going to tell you one and two is the correct answer next question is again uh, from the same news fssai food safety and standards uh, authority of india it is established under the uh, fssai act of 2006 that's okay so it's a statutory body it's autonomous body established under the act under the ministry of health and family welfare not under consumer affairs although it is important for consumers because it certifies these food items for the consumers but it is a body under ministry of health and family welfare so only one is the correct answer now fssai has released a report by EAT Foundation and the Lancet Commission regarding the healthy diet. FSSI with the PHI, Public Health Foundation of India, it is also important. They both has released, they both have released this report in India and it is regarding the nutritional value of food. You must have heard about the food fortification. What is food fortification? That food should be having abundant amount of micronutrients under it and that would be called the fortified food. We had launched national uh, nutritional mission and we launched it in rajasthan in september sorry march 2018 it is one of the most ambitious project for the kids and the pregnant mothers and we are targeting the food fortification here by nutritional food so the same issue is here the same issue issue is uh, given here and they say that if we are not moving towards healthy diet now then the very dangerous future is there the lifestyle disease they are all coming from the unhealthy food we are eating pizza burgers all our uh, fast foods they are having nothing apart from sugar and salt they are not nutritious we should move towards the nutritious food multivitamin few food and uh, fibers should be there so that we may live a balanced and healthy life and you see this is totally supported by this global alliance for improved nutrition lawrence hatad is the executive director and gain as i told you it was floated by united nations in 2002 so this is given wrong here it is not 2012 it is 2002 okay remember that and uh, this uh, importance is highlighted by this body it is uh, moving many many initiatives and programs regarding the healthy food and nutritious food so they may ask you about that in uh, this year's prelims so this is all about that tell me how do you like this uh, lesson how important do you see and uh, please share that and the PDF you will get on the Telegram channel and on the Facebook groups and may request I would approve. Thanks a lot. Keep watching. It was a bit sunny.